What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight I have your Monday Night Raw review for you guys. First Monday Night Raw coming out of WWE Backlash that happened last night on Sunday. If you guys missed that show or review, definitely go check that out. But we're back here again after the greatest wrestling match ever. What would happen with Randy Orton? What would he have to say? The WWE Champion defended the title versus Bobby Lashley at Backlash. Asuka defended the championship against Nia Jax. And we have more things unfolding across Monday Night Raw. I feel like they crammed a ton of shit in on this show. Like, every few minutes, it was like switching the segment to segment to segment. It, it, the show felt like 10 hours long. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Monday Night Raw, giving you everything that happened at the show, giving you my personal opinions on everything that took place, and let you guys know if the show was good, bad, or somewhere in between. So let's go ahead and dive in. So Randy Orton starts off our show, of course, after the greatest wrestling match ever. He was the victor in that matchup. After punting Edge in the head, what would he have to say? He comes out, he talks about Edge, how he, you know, put, put him down, he took him out, he sent him back home to be with his wife and kids, talking about his tricep injury and how he said that he heard Edge is supposed to be cleared in July of 2029 or something like that, like nine years from now. And then out of nowhere, I was super surprised by this, but none other than Christian comes out. The best friend of Edge comes out, Christian, and he gets in there and he tries to defend Edge's honor and he's like you know Edge isn't going to give up. This isn't your stance to take Randy. You know you don't get to declare when Edge gives up. You don't get to finish this story. Only Edge does and Randy Orton pretty much goes back and forth with Chris. It was a, an excellent opening segment to Monday Night Raw. I was very invested in this. I thought both guys killed it. Randy Orton pretty much told Christian you know I know you're jealous of your friend and you didn't get to end your career like you were. You wanted to and you know you were forced out and he challenges Christian to an unsanctioned match for tonight's Main event and basically says that you know if you don't accept you're a coward and that is how Monday Night Raw started off. I thought this was an excellent opening to Monday Night Raw. So we cut backstage to Zelina Vega, Angel Garza, and Andrade all conducting an interview talking about everything that took place at Backlash at last week's Monday Night Raw, how the tensions have been rising between Garza and Andrade. Then we would cut to the ring and we would have a matchup after commercial and it would be Angel Garza going one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Owens after everything they've been you know they've been having take place between these two guys. Angel Garza hit Kevin Owens in the knee. It cost him their matchup a few weeks ago. And Garza versus Owens. Owens, this is pretty much nothing, you know, your standard, typical Raw match. Owens wins after Andrade comes down to the ring and he gets on the apron, causing the referee to be distracted. And Garza gets the upper hand on Owens. And Garza's like, hey, ref, pay attention. And when he turns back around, KO hits him with a stunner. And Kevin Owens does defeat Angel Garza. One, two, three. After this, Vega and Andrade all get in the ring with Garza after KO, you know, celebrates and leaves the ring, goes back to the backstage area. Andrade, Vega, and Garza are all fighting in the ring, and pretty much Vega says, y'all shut the hell up. We gotta work together on this thing, and that was pretty much that. We cut backstage, and we have MVP and Bobby Lashley talking backstage, you know, recapping what happened at Backlash. They go to the ring, and MVP and Bobby are pretty much ripping on Lana, saying she cost him the championship. He should be WWE champion. They should be popping champagne and having an excellent, you know, celebration after what happened at Backlash, but instead Lana cost him the match. Lana comes out real heated at Lashley and they're yelling back and forth at each other. MVP even calls Lana a thought at one point in this segment. Bobby Lashley pretty much accuses her of using him for fame and likes on social media and exposing their sex life all over the place and says that he wants a divorce from Lana and Lana feels humiliated and that's pretty much that. So I guess we're going to get a divorce angle out of these guys coming soon who didn't see this coming. But yeah, that's I mean that was pretty much the segment. Not really invested in it. I don't care for this them. I think that MVP and Lashley are a solid little pairing here because MVP is a great mouthpiece for Lashley, but as far as them and a storyline and everything like that, I, I just cannot, I don't care about no divorce, man. I, I'm not invested in the couple. I don't give a damn. Well, you're probably wondering why Big Show and Akira Tozawa are on your screen right now. Well, Brad, they had another Raw Tag Titles segment where Akira and the ninjas, including that big ninja that was at WWE Backlash, they're all talking to the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders in the backstage area. Very terrible. It was god-awful. Then we, met, we, we have a commercial break, and we come back, and it's a six- or eight-man tag match. I think it was a six-man tag match. Viking Profits versus all the ninjas. The Profits pretty much just squash all the ninjas, and the big ninja 
Ninja gets in the ring with Akira Tozawa. You guys remember the big seven foot ninja. And then out of nowhere, I shit you not, here comes the Big Show. Well, out comes the damn Big Show, comes down to the ring, clears the ring, and that's pretty much it. I don't know why the Big Show came back for this. I don't, I, I'm completely lost on this. I don't know what the ninjas and the street bikes and Akira Tozawa and the big ninja have anything to do with the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits, but it's garbage. It's not good television, not invested in it. I think the Raw Tag titles are useless at this point, and it's so sad because I think that the Street Profits and Viking Raiders are so good and such a talented team, and Akira Tozawa is a very talented individual and wrestler in his own right. But here we are in this garbage with Big Show returning in 2020 to clear the ring for a big ninja. So we cut backstage and Seth Rollins pretty much does an interview about Rey Mysterio and Dominic and he says he knows he feels Dominic in the arena, you know, being the Messiah and all. He knows that Dominic is in the arena, he can feel it, and he hopes that he shows his face here tonight. Then after that, we just cut back to Christian backstage in an office. WWE 2K19 hanging on the wall instead of 2K20, probably because 2K20 is so god-awful. But Christian is pretty much just backstage on the phone saying he doesn't think he can let Randy get away with this one, and we cut back to the ring. So we cut back to the ring, and we have Seth Rollins with another promo on Rey Mysterio. You know, he's going back and forth on Rey Mysterio. And then out of nowhere, Rey Mysterio appears on the Titan Tron, you know, at his house again like we've been seeing him over the past few weeks, still out with the eye injury, even though we can clearly see his eye behind the mesh padding on his mask. They're going back and forth, you know, whatever it is, and, and Ray saying, you know, Dominic left my house. I had no control over him. He's there at Raw, whatever. And then out of nowhere, Dominic would come out and attack Seth Rollins and beat him down and then fled the ring. He would avoid Austin Theory. He would avoid Buddy Murphy, and he would pretty much jump the barricade and run away with Rollins and company pissed off. I'm just ready for a good Rollins and Mysterio match, man. I, I don't, I'm not invested in Dominic. I, I really, I know he's young and everything, but Jesus. But that was pretty much it for this one. Come backstage again, and we have MVP and Bobby Lashley backstage once again. I felt like that was a theme on this night, but they're sitting there talking, and then out of nowhere, the GOAT appears out of nowhere. The 24-7 champion R-Truth shows up, and they're all jigging it back and forth, talking crap and pissing and moaning. They're all pretty much going back and forth with each other, and then we go to commercial, and then we come back, and R-Truth is underneath a ring saying, ninjas are everywhere. I was very confused by this. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, what what, what am I watching on my television? So MVP and Bobby Lashley walk up. They seem pretty threatening. You know, they're getting in R-Truth's face. They beat him down a couple weeks ago, I do believe. I, I remember seeing that. And then out comes Big Dog. We are not Roman Reigns, Brad. We got the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre. So Drew McIntyre, R-Truth, MVP, Bobby Lashley all talking backstage. Drew firing back at Lashley and MVP. And MVP pretty much challenges R-Truth and Drew McIntyre to a 24-7 and WWE titles tag team match. So pretty much they're going to be in a tag team match and the winner of that match would be declared the 24-7 and WWE champions. After that happens, Truth pretty much talks with Drew McIntyre and says, you know, if we win this tag team title match tonight, I'll become Becky Two Belts, saying that he would become WWE champion and pretty much just making a mockery of himself like he always does. It was, it was pretty good, not going to lie. I like that comment in there. But that was pretty much that. After this, we would have a meaningless tag team match between the Iconics taking on Liv Morgan and Natalya, and the Iconics would win. This match was like five minutes long. It was very terrible. I feel so bad for Liv Morgan. This was just god-awful. Iconics win, and then they challenge Sasha and Bayley to a rematch for the tag titles next week on Raw. I'm not even going to bring my Natalya figure down, but pretty much Natalya and Lana are talking about stage, about being humiliated. Natalya says she knows how Lana feels because she was humiliated, called a thought, whatever, whatever. Didn't give a damn about this segment. Come back to the stage and we have Christian in an interview with Charlie and he accepts Orton's challenge. So the main event is set for tonight. Randy Orton will take on Christian in an unsanctioned match for the first time in a long time. Christian will be in a one-on-one -on -one matchup and it will be in an unsanctioned match here on the main event of Monday Night Raw. Come backstage again, and we have the United States Champion Apollo Crews talking with MVP, and MVP is like an agent out here. I like it because it kind of fits how his gimmick was as a superstar and now as a manager backstage role slash kind of wrestling, kind of not, but he was talking to Apollo Crews pretty much, you know, trying to recruit him, trying to get him to be his agent, let him be in his corner, and he was trying to pretty much be his agent, and Crews would politely decline and says, you know, I'm good. If I'm not a fighting champion, I'm not a champion at all, and MVP pretty much says the only way that he will 
will keep the championship is if MVP is in his corner, and that was it. So Babyface Apollo saying, F you, bro, I don't need you, and MVP saying, okay, well, screw you then, Brad. I don't give a damn. I kind of like this. I like this role that MVP is playing, and and, our, and Apollo Crews I'm enjoying as U.S. champ, so I hope they give him a good long run with a, with a good long title reign. So we cut backstage, and this was pretty surprising. Ric Flair and Charlotte chilling backstage, and Ric Flair basically asked Charlotte, you know, who who do you want to fight? You know, what what do you want to do? Who are you looking to challenge? And Charlotte pretty much says, Dad, I do whatever the hell I want. You already know. There's nobody that I want to challenge. I'm challenging anybody. I don't give a damn. You know I get whatever I want. And I was like, well, no shit. You don't say you get whatever you want whenever you want. thought this was very unique that Ric Flair would be there tonight. Very crazy to see this happen. Did not expect the Nature Boy to show up tonight. So we got back to the ring for a great matchup. I would I would love to see this matchup with some time. Apollo Crews taking on Shelton Benjamin, one of my favorites of all time here, in a non-title matchup. However, it was a very quick match. It was very shitty because Crews would pretty much just win in a very quick match. I didn't even get to see the ending because I was taking care of my son, but it was so quick that I didn't even have time. I saw like the first four minutes of the match, and it had to be like a seven-minute match, man. It was not... It was not long at all. I thought that, you know, giving these two guys time would have been excellent, but we did not get it. Very unfortunate, but Cruz does defeat Shelton Benjamin. So we cut backstage, and Drew and Truth are backstage talking, and Drew's trying to tell Truth how big the tag team match is tonight between them and Lashley and MVP, and Truth is pretty much joking around with Drew, and he talked to higher-ups at WWE, and they said that the WWE title will be the only title on the line tonight in the tag team match. So the 24-7 championship is taking a break from the 24-7 deal, and it's only going to be the WWE title on the line. So after we recap Money in the Bank and, and the women's and interview with Asuka pretty much trashing night. Jax. We cut back to the Prophets and Raiders backstage again. Big Show shows up and uh, Ivar suggests that they do carpool karaoke to settle the, you know, the anything you can do I can do better challenge that the Street Prophets and Viking Raiders have been involved in for weeks and weeks upon the cringy bullshit basketball and putt-putt golf and all this awfulness that we've been seeing. And then Big Show says, no, we're not singing. We're going to settle this with an actual championship match next week. Street Prophets and Viking Raiders agree, so I guess we needed the Big Show of all people to come in and say what the logical answer would be to have a championship match in the ring, actual wrestling for the tag titles, and that's what we get with Big Show. And then Big Show says, you know how you usually have We Want the Smoke? He changes it to the beat of Gotta Have That Funk, and he's, We Want the Smoke? Gotta Have That Smoke is pretty much what he changes the beat to, and it was cringy god-awfulness. I hated it. It was god-awful. Just terrible television to look at. Next up, guys, we have the Tag Team WWE Championship match, I guess I should say, between Drew McIntyre, the WWE Champion, and R-True taking on MVP and Bobby Lashley. I thought for sure Lana would cost them the match, but that is not the case. I don't even remember what happened. Uh, standard tag match. Bobby Lashley goes to the outside. Truth trips him into the stairs. Claymore kicked the MVP. Splashed by Truth after Drew tags him in. One, two, three. Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship, and R-Truth and them celebrate pretty much, and that was pretty much this match. We cut backstage, and we have Ric Flair and Christian talking now in the same office that Christian was on the phone, and Ric Flair pretty much is telling Christian, you know, it's not too late to back out. Back out of this matchup, you know, it's not good for your health. It's very dangerous. I know Randy Orton. I've been around him for years. I've been best friends with him. You don't want to do this, and Christian pretty much tells Ric to shut the hell up. You know, I got this. This is something I'm, I got to do. I got to defend my boy Edge. I got to do this, and Ric Flair's like, please don't do this, and Christian says, shut the hell up, Ric, and he walks off. That's pretty much what took place between these two guys. We cut back to the ring and Sasha Banks and Bayley have the Women's Tag Team Championships and they're doing a birthday celebration for Bayley. I do believe either today or yesterday was Bayley's birthday so they're doing a little birthday celebration. Out come the Iconics of all people. That's pretty much how I feel about it. They come out and they pretty much uh, it was god awful. It was a terrible segment. They come out and you know pretty much talk some trash. They slap Sasha and then Bayley yells It's my birthday! You can't slap her! And it was god awful man. It was just not good. It was very cringy and just childish and just not funny or entertaining in any way. And you guys already know there is a women's tag team championship match set for next week between these two teams. So now it's main event time. The unsanctioned matchup actually. After that we would have a Nia Jax and Asuka. You know what? 
So before the main event, we did have a Raw Women's Championship rematch between Nia Jax and Asuka, but I didn't give one single shit about it. Nia Jax getting another rematch, another rematch from Backlash. Who cares? Asuka won. She's still your Raw Women's Champion. Then we cut to the main event. We have Randy Orton and Christian in an unsanctioned match between the two. I was involved in this. I was actually excited to see what would go down. You know, the match is about to start. Bell is about to ring. Out comes the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Ric Flair comes down, and he still gets on the mic. He's like, Christian, please do not do this. This is stupid. You're going to get yourself hurt. You're going to, you could get, you know, you're going to get blasted. Don't fight Randy Orton in this unsanctioned match. And Christian pretty much gets on the ring and again tells Rick to shut the hell up. I got to do this. I can't let you stop me. I'm doing this for my man Edge. That's my brother. I got to fight for him. Bell rings. Ricketh Flair, the nature boy, woos Christian right in the ball sack. Hits him right in the nads. Low bro to Christian. Randy Orton punts his freaking head off. Probably the best punt I've ever seen Randy Orton do. If you missed this punt, go back and watch this punt. He kicked his damn head off, and that was it. One, two, three. Christian gets taken off on a stretcher. Randy Orton in his face telling you, you made me do this. You're garbage. Go join Edge on the shelf now. This is excellent work. I love this ending to the show. Did not see the dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair, doing that to my boy Christian there. But good God, that was good stuff. I was entertained in this last segment. So pretty much how the show went was the opening segment was great between Christian and Randy Orton. And the ending segment was great between all three men here with Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Christian. And that was pretty much it. Everything in between was pretty much god-awful. I would say that Drew McIntyre and R-Truth were pretty good. I like their interactions. R-Truth's just natural charisma is great. I love it so much. I just love R-Truth so much. It's it's a damn shame. But outside of this and uh, and and the, the opening segment and the ending segment, this show was abysmal to sit through. Not very entertaining. The Raw Tag Team Championship stuff they got going on right now is some of the worst TV I've seen in a long time. And I thought Raw was bad in 2019, but those segments are very cringy. It's childish, and it's just like, I, I would never want to show that to my to my friends. You know what I'm saying? It's just embarrassing to look at. But that is your Monday Night Raw review. I tried my best to sit through, guys. I sat through all three hours for you guys, so hopefully you guys can do me a favor by commenting, leaving me a like, and letting me know what you thought of Monday Night Raw. How do you feel about the current situation going on? Did you see Randy Orton punt the hell out of Christian? Let me know down in the comment section below. But I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys. Let me know what you thought of Monday Night Raw, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.